welcome to the Heaven's Cross one year anniversary. It's a delight to be here with each and every one of you. Uh, it just feels so good. I mean, Wonderful. so much energy as we were Wonderful. getting ready for this. And we're here at the Schomburg Pavilion in Kona, Hawaii. We certainly are. It's a beautiful day. It's uh, pretty early in the morning here, 9 o'clock in the morning. The crew got here very early and started setting up very and early. putting out snacks and coffee and making sure all the equipment is working. So uh, it, it seems like it's a lot past 9 o'clock. It seems like it's almost noon. But, it's not. Uh, it is, it is not here. beautiful here. The birds are chirping. And <clears throat> I know Adamus is ready to go in just a moment, but we got a few words we want to say. Okay, and we're excited that we have Shamber from all over the world that are tuning in, watching this live, and also watching it later. I don't know exactly how many countries are represented, but there's got to be at least 30 or 40, as there normally would be on a webcast. Maybe there's more, but uh, we'll find out. Uh, but it feels so good when we gather our energies together, when particularly for something like this. Uh, it's it's epic. It's very, very personal, very touching. Um uh, it's emotional and it's um, it's big. It's, it's really big. big. Uh, as as you know from well, all the talk about Heaven's Cross, it's Adama says it's really the beginning of the apocalypse, and that sounds kind of scary. But uh, actually, apocalypse that old church word is what people tend to fall to. Yeah, that's true. But but it also gets people's attention when you talk well, about the true. apocalypse. But literally, the apocalypse doesn't mean destruction. It means to reveal or to uncover. And that's exactly what we're doing with the apocalypse, with Heaven's Cross. It's not about the end of the world, uh, but rather the beginning of a whole new era for humans. So there's a big difference. Yeah, the word apocalypse is charged, but I also think it, it causes us to pause for a moment and stop and consider the implications of what we're actually doing. Well, and it's interesting that this has been a year now, and it's been a rather interesting year, up and down. Oh, yeah. One year, a lot of, uh, lot of tears, a lot of laughter. And I think there was expectations on everybody's part about the, uh, the apocalypse. And, you know, in a way, as humans, we want some great big event to happen. Uh, but the way things usually work is it unfolds slowly, first of all, so that we can really handle it, so it's not a shock. But uh, the way that uh, time, space, gravity, everything works with us, it unfolds over a period of time. And uh, I know I, for one, was expecting or hoping for some fireworks. Uh, in a way, there were, but they're not where I thought they'd be. You know, I thought they'd be out there like you watch fireworks in the sky and the horizon. But the fireworks were actually in here. <laughs> and uh, at times, the fireworks were beautiful. At times, they were pretty overwhelming uh so that's that's my own heaven's cross my own apocalypse but uh, what a year it's been uh since we we sat here literally we were right. at chamber pavilion a year ago when we did this according to adamas there's more light on the planet uh as, than ever and it's so important right now as he talks about uh the the time of that we're at here on the planet but he's also talking now about new light uh, we've actually had a couple wonderful workshops here recently about discovering the new light. And it's it's amazing. I mean, the physics are amazing, the implications, and especially tied in right now to what we're all doing here on the planet. Well, you know, it's real interesting, too, because, you know, you talk about expectations with this apocalypse and new light and consciousness. Well, that's an interesting experience because when there's more mm -hmm. light and consciousness, you suddenly see things, more things than you did before. Yeah. And that's not always the pretty part. No, so no. That's what makes it uncomfortable is because you have to see something more to change it. Yeah, absolutely. And so often people, you know, keep their head in the sand or, you know, keep from uh, emerging uh, because sometimes that energy and that light are hard to handle. Uh, you know, people always talk about wanting more energy but the fact is they just want easier energy and you know they get more energy and they're just going to intensify things and it's like you say when there's more light it causes you to see things maybe you didn't want to see uh so uh, the good news through all this is that we as shambra are here on the planet doing what we agreed to do uh we we all came in at this profound time and we knew we were going to be here to bring in more light to the planet as it goes through its greatest evolution ever. And that's what creates change. Yeah, absolutely. 
uh, and through the, the realm workers that Adamus has talked about, it's really the realm workers were here to open the corridors between uh, Earth and the other realms to facilitate or allow more light to come in. They were actively doing this for, well, decades before Heaven's Cross ever came. And when we had the event last year of Heaven's Cross, Adama said, the, the work is done. And uh, we, we honor all of them, all of you who did that, the realm work. And to an extent, I know there was, a, there was some anxiety about returning back here, uh, partly because the work was done. Uh, that mission portion was accomplished. And partly because it, then there were expectations that when you got done with the work, suddenly the doors are going to come flying open and, you know, angels are going to come down from heaven and all sorts of things happening. And, and they didn't, uh, not, in, not in that way, not in the way we see it with our, our eyes and perceive it in our reality. Many changes have occurred, but they're at a very underlying level, a very deep level. And on the surface, things um, man, are a little shaky on the planet, but they're going very fast too, which is kind of kind of scary. So that's where trust comes in. That's where trust comes in. But the realm workers did such an incredible job. And, you know, now now they can retire, uh, so to speak. They can sit on that park bench or do whatever. But it was kind of a big, big shift for those of you who were realm workers, right. uh, a huge shift that you had to uh, adapt to. Uh, right now, light or let's call it consciousness is needed on this planet like never before. Uh, this is an unprecedented time that we're living in. Just the the nature of change, the speed of change, uh, the evolution of uh, the the whole human system is, is changing so quickly, and it needs the right. light. And the light right. is what balances it. The light is what shines greater potentials into those who are, uh, whether they're our leaders, whether they're the technology people, whether they're uh, well anybody really. That light shows more potential and sh more opportunity for humanity. And uh, while these changes are occurring very fast, you take a look at it and what's really fueling the changes is technology. Oh, beyond words. Yeah. I mean, I love technology, oh. but it's, it's sometimes it's just going so fast I can't keep up it's with unreal. it. It's unreal, yeah. almost unreal. And just think two years ago, we weren't talking about things like uh, chat GPT or mid journey or artificial intelligence and now I mean, it's in our hands. Uh, it's available. We're using it, and it's awesome. But yet, at the same time, it's a little frightening. Where's what's it going to be like one year from now? Uh, where will this technology take us, and how fast is it going to kind of exponentially grow? I mean, you know, it's been on a curve that's going up sharply, but it's almost like the 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 sharper the curve. The more sharp the curve, uh, the faster it goes. So, well, and consciousness, like you said, is more important than ever because of that, yeah, right? And consciousness is what made the technology available and practical for us. There had to be enough consciousness on the planet for it to even become so. But now, its technology is going very fast. Mm -hmm. It's picking up on that, and we need to to balance it with our light, with our consciousness. Sometimes that light is um, it's. It's a challenge, you know. You say, "Well, shine your light." And that's, you know, sounds easy, but uh, there is a tendency to want an agenda in it, uh, to want a certain outcome of the whole thing, and that, that's where it gets difficult. Can you just shine your light without the agenda, without pers putting your personal beliefs and preferences in in place, without trying to change everybody? We're simply making more light available, letting them have more uh, potentials at their disposal, we're not trying to change them. And you know uh, what Adama and Tobias said, the minute you try to change something or someone, it will try to change you. Uh, and it will, it will kind of backfire on you. It's kind of a warning. Well, and the, the true definition of compassion is acceptance. You know, it's accepting others, it's accepting ourself. And when we shine our light, it's done so in compassion, not trying to not having an agenda, not having a, a particular specific outcome we desire. We're just here shining our light. And much as the angelic beings have done for us in the past, and much as our uh, even our future lives, much as our master self has been doing, just shining that light. And then it's up to us, or in this case, up to humanity, what are they going to do with it? 
one of the interesting things that one of the things that I love is that as Adamus uh, goes into the apocalypse, as we've been moving along, he's talking more and more about uh, true metaphysics, uh, and I love it because it's um, it's really getting down to some of the basics. You know, I find it interesting because at first it was just I. I was really having a hard time connecting to it. But as he mm. talks about it more, it gets more and more comfortable to feel into what he's saying, I noticed. Well, there's almost a certain resistance with some of us exactly. to talking about physics or science or math or things like that. Uh, and it's like, oh, geez, I don't want it some long, boring lecture. But he's taking the metaphysics right. and making it almost poetic. Absolutely. Uh, very beautiful. We're not diving deep into the... Uh, the interactions between molecules and cells and things like that. You know, it's, you don't have to memorize a bunch of funny Latin right, words. Right. Uh, but it, he's he's doing it poetically. He's talking about what is consciousness. Well, it's, it's awareness. Right. Uh, what is energy? I mean, that's a huge question uh, that people have been asking. It's communication. Uh, whereas most people think it's a force. Exactly. Uh, what is light? He's been talking about that recently. Uh, more and more about it, and he says that light, as we know it, the 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 light that comes as a result of energy being called into service, is imagination. So these are the metaphysics that he's been talking about, and I love it. I mean, it it really puts I do everything into perspective. <laughs> yeah, and sometimes it's it's hard to channel uh, because is it? yeah, you know. and it's it's really new and uh you know, I really have to keep a focus on my connection with Adamus. Sometimes it's hard to find the proper words oh. uh because he doesn't tell me the words. I mean, he's just kind of feeding the consciousness or the energy and I have to turn it into words. But he's comfortable uh, correcting you. Yes, he is. Yes. <laughs> but sometimes it's a real struggle. And I know we did something recently where I said, oh, man, I really butchered that. That was terrible. I mean, I graded myself. I gave myself like a D plus or something. And uh, everybody here that you know was with the, us during the production is like, no, it sounded great. And I'm like, okay, they're just BSing me. But I said, really, it sounded great. So in my in my insides, I was thinking it was rough and choppy, but apparently it came through okay. Uh, those things are more you difficult. You have to trust yourself. Thank you. <laughs> those things are more difficult uh, to to channel, but in the end, they're a lot more rewarding too. When we get into these uh, some of the deep metaphysics, which which I've really come to love. I, I hope he talks about more of that. Jeff, you do a great job. You really, really dive into it, and you give it your all. Thank you. Uh, I love doing it. and We but, all feel that. You know, to tie in the metaphysics uh, along with the apocalypse, along with everything that's happening on the planet, gives a deeper understanding of how things work and why they work and ultimately right. how we are truly the creators and can work with these things, the, the consciousness and the energy. And it's interesting to note that uh, consciousness is one of the hottest topics um, on the planet right, right. now, uh, particularly in the technology community and the philosophical, because they're saying, will AI ever have consciousness? And it depends how you define consciousness. But uh, Adama says, ultimately, no, they can't, uh, that it belongs to the soul being, although the soul being can embody their consciousness, embed it in just about anything. So in a way, in an odd way, yes, if you infuse your consciousness into AI, it's still your consciousness, not AI's, but it will appear that AI has a certain degree of consciousness. But all these things are just mind-blowing, and have, we're right here, right in, the, right in the middle of all of it, uh, helping to facilitate it by what we do, and to ultimately remember that we are creators. We are creators. I mean, every soul being is. And that the evolution that we're going through right now, uh, including our own realization, uh, including the understanding of metaphysics and ultimately how to really let energy serve you, this is all a very natural process. Uh, Damas has been stressing that lately, saying it's all natural. You really don't have to work at it. Just be aware of it. Understand what's going on but you don't have to work at it and be open to it i mean yeah yeah we hear people questioning themselves and it's like that, i don't think he advises that yeah well you that you're hearing me question myself from time to time but you know it's for all of us it's big i mean it this is. is huge it's uh it's almost sometimes it sounds so uh, magnificent so 
so big. It's like, who, me, part of this? Uh, but Adamus keeps reminding us that's what we're here to do. And ultimately, it's really about remembering that we are creators and, and a big one, enjoying the rest of our last lifetime on the planet. Uh, that's, to, that's so big. We, we've been here a long, long time. And it's ultimately now, let's enjoy that last lifetime on the planet. So there were many expectations with Heaven's Cross, and, and that, that's imaginable, but... Yeah, there were. Uh, and uh, Adamus, I believe, started off in, in the Heaven's Cross message saying, uh, you know, this unfolds uh, over time. It unfolds in different ways. It, it's kind right. of a subterranean in a, in a way that it's going to work underneath uh, as well as within us, but many, many expectations about it. And uh, ultimately... Heaven's Cross on March 22nd last year was, it was, it wasn't, there wasn't anything uh, about the date that necessarily happened, but it's about everything that happens after that. And it's the same with the Quantum Leap that we did in 2007. Seven, yeah. uh, there was a great event down in Taos, New Mexico. And it, it something big happened on that day. It was a lot of fun with all those people. But it's unfolded over time. And basically the significance of the quantum leap was that it was now assured that we weren't going to turn back. Humanity wasn't going to go backwards. Right. It wasn't right. going to fall into the dark ages like it had done before. We weren't going to go back into that Atlantean calamity that we had once had. So it was saying, okay, we made it to this point. Now we start leaping forward, but we won't go back. And, and it's the same way with Heaven's Cross. Uh, it, it was kind of a, a marking point for many, many, many changes that would come. And we're right in the middle of it right you now. Uh, it's really the time for all of us to do what we came here to do, to allow our light to shine, uh, both within ourselves and uh, to the rest of the world. It makes a huge difference. And you really can sense that difference and you can sense that other people sense it. Yeah. Right now we're doing what we came here to do, uh, to shine that light, to be here at this time of the machines. And it's also, as I said, time to do it for ourselves, to put it into our personal lives, to get rid of all the junk, uh, you know, and really enjoy life. And, you know, it sounds easy, but uh, to, to, to make those shifts, you know, and to say, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to move these stuff out of the way. Uh, it's, it's difficult to do, but ultimately I think we're kind of really pushed into doing it. And just making the commitment to it. I've have felt some of it just move away. It just exactly. knows to move away. You know, have you had that happen? Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. Yep. I love that. Anyway, uh, I think it's time to get started. Okay. I'm getting tapped on the shoulder by Adamus saying, okay, okay, uh, <laughs> you know, you're not the star of the show here, Buckwheat, you know, so um, we're going to do some breathing okay. with Linda. And uh, once again, it's, it's such a delight to have each and every one of you here for this wonderful event. Um, thank you. Appreciate it. So with that, let's get, make sure you're really comfortable wherever it is that you're seated and really take care of you. And with that, Let's take that good, deep, conscious breath, as always, letting the energies flow with each breath. Take that good, deep breath, feeling into all that you are, breathing, flowing, breathing to you, the human, the master. Breathe and feel all that wisdom Take the good deep breath, opening to the highest potentials, giving yourself permission to really feel. Breathe in, knowing Adamus is here with so much to share. Breathe in the words, the energy, it's all here. Breathe in Adamus, he's here with every breath. He invites us to breathe him in. Take the good deep breath, really allowing the optimum experience for this heaven's cross. Breathe and flow. Breathe into your body, a love of self. Be with the good deep breath. 
Breathe. Open it. Breathe and flow. Breathe. We're ready for Adamus. Breathe that in. Ready for some wonderful inspiration. Breathe. I am that I am. Adamus of St. Germain. So welcome, dear Chambra. Welcome to this uh, beautiful gathering uh, one year after Heaven's Cross. Let's take a moment and continue with that beautiful breathing from Linda. Let's take a deep breath into this event. One year later, we're still here. You're still here. And the world, the world oh, changing rapidly. Uh, I, I don't think that's really lost on anyone unless you just um, really are burying your head in the sand, as Calder mentioned. But the world is changing very rapidly right now. So much going on on the planet. And here we are, well into the apocalypse, well into the very, very, very reason why you came here. Now, I have a few things to say. Uh, Calder actually said most of what I was going to say, so uh, I have to quickly improvise. But uh, the important thing is that this session, this one-year anniversary, is for you. What we did last year was about others. It was about the planet. It was literally about the universe. This is for you one year later. You've been going through a lot of things. You've been bringing in a lot of light. You've been letting that light radiate out. And now it's for you to take this, this opportunity. We'll, we'll have a mirab at the end of this session to let that light serve you now. I mean, specifically. So it's been a year, and I could say that uh, there is about a little over 3% more consciousness, more light on the planet than there was a year ago. And that's a lot when you consider. It's, it's a whole lot when you take a look at what just a little bit of light does. But the question is, where is this light and what is it doing? Right now, this light has come in uh, through those humans who are aware. And, and there's many that are very aware, and they don't necessarily call it light or, or even consciousness. Uh, they just know that they're bringing in a higher level. Of, uh, some of it call, call it a higher intelligence, but a higher level of beingness to this planet, uh, uh, a higher standard. So this 3% that's out there, uh, it's working at the very, very deep levels right now. I mean, deep within Earth itself. Uh, Gaia is leaving, and it's no coincidence that it's happening right about this time of the apocalypse. So much of this light is going into the Earth uh, itself, uh, getting it ready and adjusting for humans to take over, to take responsibility for the planet. It's working at levels of releasing old energies that have been there for a long, long time. Uh, energies that come from uh, when, when somebody dies, oftentimes they're buried in the ground. Those energies, part of them, stay in the ground for a long, long, long time. And uh, the whole thing with burial is kind of odd, but, uh, but it, it leaves energy residue all around. Uh, when there's wars, when there are battlefields, it leaves energy residues. When uh, tribes were wiped out due to starvation or natural causes, it leaves a residue. So in the earth itself, there's a tremendous amount of old energy, and it's time to release that. Uh, all energy ultimately finds resolution, uh, but sometimes it needs that the kind of shift from light itself, consciousness itself, to to move on. So that's why uh, the, the planet is experiencing things that are what we call global climate change. There, there's also a lot of severe weather uh, and uh, highs and lows like never before. It's not just warming, it's cooling, it's shaking and rattling, it's just a little bit of everything. And it's because now there is more light available going into these old spots of uh, kind of stuck energy. and causing them to lift up. It's interesting how some people observe and then make their judgments about what's happening, uh, saying it's due to the, the humans and to the carbon uh, pollution and things like that. Part of that is true. 
but a lot of it has to do simply with old energies being released from the earth so humans can take over this planet, no longer having Gaia have to be responsible for it. So that's happening on the planet right now. A lot of the light that is coming in is going there. A lot of the light that's coming in is literally going to your past lives and other people's past lives. You see, as you come into full realization, embodied realization on the planet, it also means that, that every past life and potential future life is also going through their realization. Uh, nobody's left behind. They are, uh, your past lives are actually going through their own realization. But instead of going into ascension, which means going off the planet straight into the other realms, they integrate with you and through you. So a tremendous amount of light goes out into these uh, into these past lives uh, as they are making their way through. And uh, you wonder sometimes, well, why am why do I feel all this commotion going on since Heaven's Cross? Uh, why are my dreams so crazy? Because you're feeling what is happening with all these past lives, because they too are coming to realization and ultimately uh, melding and merging with you for your final ascension from the planet. So a lot of the light is going there. A lot of the light is simply going to the, I would say, old systems on the planet that need that light now. The old systems are, are old. A lot of them are no longer valid for, for humanity, no longer valid in the way they work. Some of, for instance, your financial system is over 500 years old. It's changed to an extent, but the basics of it are still very old and really don't serve uh, humanity the way it could. So light is going there, not to slap it on the face, not to um, uh, suddenly burn down Wall Street, but to come in from the underneath to begin lifting things up gently so that changes can be made. A lot of light is going into uh, the kind of the, how do you, say it, um, kind of a waiting room uh, or a reservoir for the unawakened humans. And there's a lot of them, a lot of unawakened humans. They're going to be coming to their awakening soon or, or maybe not even in this lifetime, but soon enough. And through the work that you've done with uh, well, the realm workers and through Heaven's Cross itself, it's making more and more light available to them when they are ready. Uh, you can almost feel it. There's so many humans who are right on the verge. You know, it's like, um, it's almost like saying, you know, they're, they're sound asleep in bed, but it's uh, 5.45 a.m. and they're starting to kind of move around and they're going to be awakening very soon, but they're now in that uh, kind of overall process of pre-awakening. So a lot of light goes to them. And this light is going to make it much easier for them in their awakening, much easier for them to do that waking up and eventually becoming realized. A lot of the light is going into the creative aspects of humanity, of the, the human being, into the, into the Adam Cadman template of the human that's been shut down or put aside for a long time now. Uh, the humans have gotten very mental, very linear, very intellectually based. And what suffered is true creativity. Creativity is essential for, for I say, any species, no matter where they are, whether it's Earth or any other place. The creativity is essential. It keeps everything unfolding or moving. It represents your true creator self, uh, and any soul being is a creator being. So a lot of light now is going to those areas of creativity for the humans. And then uh, a lot of light is also simply coming to you, uh, that making available, helping to move stuff uh, out, going into your past lives, helping you to make life easier, and I know for a lot of you, it hasn't been easier necessarily uh, because of this light housekeeping that you're doing, the, 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 the real deep 
changes and transformations in your life. But that light is there and it's your light that's doing this. So I say about there's a little over 3% more light on the planet now than there was a year ago. About 2% or uh, of that, 66% is what I would call the classic light, uh, regular light. About 33% of that, uh, 3%, is new light. It's new light. We've been talking recently with the groups here at the Chambre Pavilion about new light, what it is, what it, what it does. But when you feel into it, you have this infusion now of light, which is consciousness, and then new light coming in. And oftentimes that new light is, um, it seems elusive. You're not familiar with it like you are with regular light. So uh, there is kind of an assumption that there's nothing there, but actually there really is. So there's a difference uh, between new light and, uh, and classic light. Regular light, as in the, the light we talk about coming from consciousness, then energy, and then light, that light is imagination. Uh, just like energy is simply uh, the, the song of the soul, it's communication. Light is imagination. You know, you could you could say, well, on a scientific level, it's got certain qualities and it has uh, uh, photons and it's got wavelengths and every. But no, at its core, true light is imagination. And uh, when you think about it, when you when you imagine you are creating, you're calling energy into service, and then it transforms into light, which eventually may, works its way down into your reality. So there's a lot of that light coming in. And those of you who were realm workers, you dealt with that light, the, the light of imagination. Imagination not meaning you're making it up, because you can't make anything up. Imagination meaning that you're expanding, you're opening up your imagining. And that's what a creator does. They imagine. They imagine other realms like, like this planet Earth. They imagine universes. They imagine being micro. They imagine being macro. They imagine being God. They imagine being human. That's the beauty of the soul. It can imagine. It's the beauty of a light. It carries that and it makes it so. Now we have then new light. What's the difference? What's the difference between new light and classic light? Well, new light has a unique attribute to it. As you go through your human experiences, uh, you live life, uh, and that's what you, the human, are, are really good at. You're really good at experiencing things, good and bad. You know, it's kind of funny. It's uh, The human is kind of that facet of the overall I am that goes into experience. And there is kind of a, almost like a, something in your spiritual DNA that has you as a human now, you go into experience and you want it all. You want the good, you want the rough, you want to see how low, low is and how high, high is. Uh, oftentimes you complain about it and you know, talk about how your life sucks, but well, that's just an experience. Uh, you can change that, by the way, anytime you want. But oftentimes I find that humans don't want to change that. They want those d varieties of experiences. Uh, you can almost hear it from them sometimes. Why just have good experiences or happy experiences or easy experiences when you can dive into the rough stuff? You can become an alcoholic. You can become homeless. You can become a warrior, whatever you want. The human's really good at experiencing. All these experiences that you have, or you've ever had, or your past lives have ever had, they end up being, uh, you could say, kind of stored or housed in, in your personal Akasha. The Akasha is not a group thing. It's not, we don't all combine it together. Wouldn't that be awful? If your Akasha was combined with your ex-wives uh, or your uh, former business partner or those things, no, your Akasha is all your own. It doesn't intermingle with anybody else's. Nobody can get in there and, and take it. It's all yours. 
And these, these uh, experiences remain in the Akasha for a long, long time. I mean, you've kind of it's, you got this really great big warehouse of experiences, and they're there to partially remind you of what you've done in the past, also so you don't necessarily repeat it if you didn't like it. They're there to help form the ego, the identity of of yourself. You have availability to them. You may not remember details such as uh, what your name was in a past life, or you may not even remember what happened last week. But the essence of those experiences are in the Akasha, and you're constantly referring back to them all the time. It's it's not just like your mental memory that's different, but this is the, the essence of all the experiences you've ever had. And, and you can use that to build, to grow, to better uh, yourself, and to create new experiences. But at a certain point, with the maturity of yourself, as you've gone through enough experiences and, and learned a lot, and there's not really reason for lessons anymore, now it's simply about joy. With that, that doorway to the Akasha opens and starts letting out all these experiences, kind of like you open the barn door and now all the cows and the horses start slowly leaving. But in this case, what happens with all those experiences, with the maturity that you have now as a mature, angelic, human, spiritual being, those experiences go now back to the soul. And the soul loves them. soul takes those and turns them into wisdom. Into wisdom. Wisdom, we've talked about many times, is it's not the details of your experience. It's the essence of it, the, the pearl uh, within them, the gem that is held in everything you've ever done, even if you were a drug addict. The soul doesn't judge that. It was just an experience. It distills it into the beauty, into uh, into that wisdom uh, that even goes beyond just saying, well, as a drug addict, I learned that you know, I uh, limited myself, I harmed myself, and and uh, it's not what I want. It, it even takes it well beyond that to the sheer beauty of what it's like to be a creator and to uncreate yourself in many ways. So once this wisdom comes from the soul, the soul doesn't just hang on to it and dance with it or talk to it every day. It releases it once again back to you, the mature soul being. It releases it back into this big circle of creation. And now it comes back as new light. New light. And that's what I mean when I refer to, to new light. It's filled with wisdom. It's filled with the past experiences. It's filled with a, the light itself. But now it's... Um, it's almost like a higher level light, a different type of light. And oftentimes uh, you don't feel it right away. You don't necessarily understand the difference between new light and regular light. But when you, when you as a human desire something and you want to manifest it in your life, now what you're doing is calling forth not just your light. You're not just taking energy calling it forth in delight and bringing it into reality. You're bringing in new light. You may not be familiar with it. You may It may feel different than classic light, so you say, well, where's all the light we're talking about? I ask you now to feel into your own wisdom, your own maturity, and the fact that light now takes on different attributes. New light has that wisdom. It has automatic balance in it. Automatic balance. So even if you were to make a bad decision, but one that didn't really serve you well, it would automatically rebalance things and bring them back into your true path, your true way. A lot of this new light uh, came in also during Heaven's Cross and continues to become available. In a way, it was kind of held in the other realms until until this event. But now you've got a lot of new light coming in as well, as well as classic light. So a lot of you ask, well, bah, nothing happened. Nothing happened. 
uh, maybe expecting some uh, planetary uh, explosion or uh, something. A lot is happening right now. Don't let it be lost on you. What is going on kind of beneath the surface because it's all going to come up at one point. There are there are wars on the planet right now, but they're old, old wars that are coming to the surface, seeking resolution, but having a difficult time finding it. With the light that you are radiating out to the planet, it will help find that resolution. These are very old problems. These didn't just start, you know, uh, 50 years ago, 100 years ago. These go way, way, way back. And those need to be released as uh, well as a lot of uh, contained within them are a lot of old beliefs, old beliefs about God and about life itself and about uh, uh, suffering uh, that are involved in this. And they take a while to really come to the surface and be released. The light is there. The light is working at it, not trying to force a resolution, but saying, Hey guys, there are much more potentials than you're looking at right now. You're looking at the potentials for peace in a very old way, in a very power-driven way, and there's more ways to do it. The light that you're bringing to the planet right now is helping to awake so many other people when, when they're ready, but it will be there and available for them. It's helping to drive technology right now, which is going faster than nearly anyone predicted. You know, if you go back 10 years ago or five years ago, there was a lot of uh, predictions and, and um, uh, kind of assumptions about where technology was going to go, including that technology would just kind of come to a standstill. We couldn't go any further. Well, that's the furthest thing from the truth. The technology is there right now, and it's moving very, very fast. And it's fascinating. Everything about it that I uh, that I learned through you a lot of times, uh, everything I learned, it's absolutely fascinating. I think what a tool humanity has in this. It's new intelligence. It's it's the the new mind in a way. In a way, it is so fast and so efficient, and could be such a tool, not just here on the planet not just here on earth but in other realms in other places where there is uh, there are uh, there's living beings in other places not necessarily human this technology has implications even for them it's going very very fast but on the other hand as we all know get into the wrong hands it can be scary it's interesting that humans are good-natured, good-hearted people, souls. By and far, all of them have beautiful hearts. They want good for others and then themselves. They want good for their community, for their planet. Many of them are asleep in a way, but that's simply part of their journey, and, and they're going to be waking up pretty soon. But the vast majority of humans are filled with goodness. Not sin, but goodness. And now you have just a small percent, a, a tiny percent, that are not filled with that goodness. They have a lot of darkness. They have a lot of ill intent. They're still addicted to power. They're still, no matter what you would tell them, they believe energy is out there and they have to go steal it and hoard it and battle for it and overtake others for it. They haven't learned that the energy is all within in the first place. You don't need to go outside for it. But they come from the old. They're, they're the, the, the old power brokers. And they're making their last stance right now. Uh, they're, they're, they're battling it out. They're fighting it out. And they don't want to see change on this planet. They don't want to see light on this planet they don't trust the light. They, they think it's some trick. And they want to go backwards. The old are, uh, they're coming forth right now. I mean, just uh, look at the, uh, in the United States, uh, the candidates for presidents. These are not new, fresh thinking people uh, at all. It's, it's the old. It's the old, even masculine energy, the old 
uh, rigid energies of the planet. And you might say, well, then why are they the ones on, on the ballot? Because the old has to come forth so that it can be changed. And read into that what you want. <laughs> So, my dear friends, uh, the light is here. It's all around. It's doing what light does. It's illuminating. It's making more potentials available to everyone. Now, I wrote a book back in my last lifetime. You might have heard about it, The Time of Machines. Uh, there are some of you who haven't heard about it because you're brand new, but uh, I wrote this book. Uh, I wrote it in approximately 1793 and 94 time period. I had uh, done a little time traveling, and I found myself in one of these time travels, a very poignant one, uh, in the year 2020. And I found myself suddenly there, uh, uh, almost like I was walking on the planet. I mean, I almost felt like I was in human form. It was that real. And I found myself with a group that had come from the mystery schools of the past that uh, I'd been with. I, I found that many of them also had been at the, the time of Yeshua, uh, which was another common characteristic of Shambra, and they had also come from the temples of Tian in Atlantis. And suddenly I was amongst them. They had gathered together under the, the name of Crimson Circle, kind of a ripping off the Crimson Council, and they they came back to earth, gathered together. <clears throat> they heeded the call. <clears throat> Many of them heeded the call of Tobias coming back at this particular time. And I found it amazing as I was <clears throat> writing the chapters in the book uh, about my experiences. Uh, first of all, I noticed right away, uh, many people were wearing masks. Couldn't quite figure that out until later I learned it was COVID. <clears throat> then the other thing that truly baffled me uh, a, 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 partly things like automobiles. I, I had kind of expected there would be a new mode of transportation, but I didn't realize it would be these metal boxes that people would drive around in and uh, have to fill with gasoline and uh, be equipped with radios and televisions and what you now call GPS. It was fascinating. I was, I was also taken by airplanes. Everyone wants to fly. I mean, like without an airplane, everyone wants to just be able to fly like a bird. So I saw these airplanes up there, and I was just absolutely fascinated that you could actually fly in this very heavy metal tube uh, from one end of the world to the other in, in a day or so of time. I found that fascinating. I found it fascinating also these uh, that everybody was looking down all the time. And it was even Chambra looking down, and... I was I was really mystified by this. Why is everybody looking down at their hands? And then I realized it was what I call your looking glasses. You're looking at these, uh, you call them <coughs> smart devices, <coughs> mobile phones. Everybody's looking at their phones. And I, th I found it fascinating what was in there. <laughs> How could you put all of that inside that little device you were carrying around? And then I, as I learned more and more about it, I found it fascinating that you could be connected with anybody in the world instantly. You could suddenly have their image up on your screen and talk to them in real time. I was, I was totally fascinated by what was going on. As I continued my time traveling and worked more and more with Chambra, I, uh, I found myself, it was kind of a funny situation, I found myself attending what you now call your shouds. Uh, and here I was time traveling, but there I was in the shout. I was leading this group. Who would have thought? It was, it was kind of a weird dream within a dream type of thing in, in my time traveling. I learned more and more about this group that had been together with me in the mystery schools, that had been together at the time of Yeshua and in the temples of Tien and Atlantis, and learned that this group had come back with incredible determination, uh, unbelievable determination, that this was going to be the lifetime of realization. I learned that many had delayed it. They could have had their realization a lifetime or two ago, but they delayed it until now. 
I learned that this group was here for realization and ultimately to fulfill a very, very old, you could say promise or agreement or dream actually, to be here at this time of machines, to be here on this planet to bring forth light, knowing that it was needed as a balance for technology. It was needed to introduce a new physics to the planet. A physics that would be ridiculed by science or uh, physicists, of course, but to bring it here, to put it into mass consciousness as uh, it's not an alternative to earth sciences, but it's an expansion of earth science. For instance, the whole concept of gravity is somewhat correct in regular earth science, but it's not full. It doesn't explain the whole picture. So I learned that that these beings called Chamber were here to bring in a new metaphysics. And I found myself teaching it to them, but they already knew it. I was simply reminding them of it. <clears throat> and I found myself here at this time where they knew that a new human species was emerging. It was birthing right then and there. And that species could really be just about anything. It could be augmented uh, biology. It could be Ro totally robotic. It could be really just about anything. And they were here to bring in the light. So for those developing these technologies and for those using the technologies, there would be wisdom, maturity, and potentials. That there would be not the reckless use of this most potent tool of new technology of artificial intelligence, but there would be the, the beauty of the tool to really bring humanity to a new level of compassion and caring, no longer wars or famine, no longer money hoarding, no longer power and abuse. But they were here to bring light and this thing called new light to the planet, and also for those who are now going to start awakening. As I was writing my book, it, it, seemed, um, <clears throat> it seemed to be, uh, well, sci-fi, what you now know as sci-fi, uh, but there was no genre at, the, at that time. It wasn't going to come until a couple decades later. The, the first true sci-fi book was Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. So uh, if I'd have published mine, mine would have been the first. But it never got published, and probably rightfully so, it would have been scoffed at. Uh, it would have been banned. Uh, they, they would have come after me personally for writing such a thing because several of the chapters in that book, The Time of Machines, uh, talk about religions and the ill effects of religions on the planet now. Religion has not evolved. It hasn't. Most everything else has evolved, but religion hasn't evolved, and I took great shots out of it in my book, uh, and perhaps I'll <clears throat> give some of the uh, uh, information to Calder so he can uh, talk to you about it at some point. But back to the point. You're here at this time uh, of the time of machines, the time I wrote about, and in there I wrote about this thing called the apocalypse. I, I called it that in my book. I also called it the light bridge. Uh, we're now calling it Heaven's Cross, but it, there are referred to it as the apocalypse or the light bridge, that time where that consciousness is able to expand into the other realms, open those realms, and bring more consciousness, more light, and new light to this planet. When it's absolutely needed, don't, don't, uh, please don't diminish what is happening on the planet right now in terms of the speed of which it's happening. You're here for that, to bring your wisdom, your maturity, and your light. I wrote about the apocalypse. And I wrote uh, about how it was a time of phenomenal change on the planet. And in, in that book, I talked about how everything went new. You may remember in a channel, in a session we did, March 2016, I talked, everything goes new. Everything, nothing, no species on the planet, no old beliefs or habits or institutions, no, no f grains of sand are left untouched. Everything on the planet goes new. 
And I wrote about that in The Time of Machines and saying, what a time to live in when it goes new, but new meaning it has expanded light and expanded consciousness. It's shedding its old cocoon or its old skin or shell in order for it to go new which is the natural way of things to move beyond, to continue to expand and evolve. And that's what's happening on your planet right now. Everything is going new. Everything is changing. And consider the implications of that for a moment. Everything, not, not all at once. Some things are still holding back uh, and, and trying to hold on to the old. That's not going to work. It will not work. There's too much momentum. There's too much light. But they're trying. And that's where you feel the tensions, where that's where you get these wars and uh, division of, uh, of humanity. Uh, so everything is going new. Imagine those implications on the entire planet. And imagine now the need for this light and new light on the planet. That's why you're here. Now, in the book, uh, I took a little bit different direction than what is going to happen now, but in the book, I wrote that ultimately lazy humans gave everything over to robots and artificial intelligence. Let them do it. Let them do my thinking. Let them tell me what to eat, how to plan my day. Let, let all this new technology, let me just sit on the sofa all day and play video games and do nothing. And eventually the robots did take over. And to the extent that they could, but they were still searching for something the humans had that they didn't, that last vestige, that last thing. And that very last thing that the humans had that the robots didn't was consciousness. The robots tried to uh, pretend like they, they did. They tried to emulate it, but you cannot emulate consciousness. You can only be com consciousness. You can't fake it. <clears throat> the robots tried to emulate love. They, Of course, they had all the information about love available to them and all the recordings, all the music, books, and everything else, <clears throat> human conversations, so they could extrapolate what love acted like, although they may have never had that love. But they pretended they did. And uh, there, and to get into it, there are parts of the book where we talked about humans falling in love with robots, robots falling in love with humans, uh, robot to robot. I mean, it was all over the place. I think you got problems right now with uh, identification. It was really, you get robots in there and you're going to be really confused. In that book, the robots eventually pretty much took over everything. They directed the day-to-day -day activities. They directed everything from how much water you could use, uh, how much electricity, how much anything you could do, what you eat, uh, what is grown in the fields, how much wine you could drink. And at first, the humans were more than happy to have somebody, this kind of a parent figure, uh, intelligent robot telling them what to do. But eventually, they found it stifling. They, they couldn't do anything. They couldn't make their own decision about what time to take a shower in the morning because the robots had it all figured out. AI had it figured out to optimize water usage. So you were assigned a, a very specific increment of time for your shower and how much soap you could use and uh, how long you could use a towel before it had to be washed. And I'm serious. This is what I saw and this is what I wrote about. Well, the bottom line is that the robots wanted this one last thing, consciousness, light. They couldn't find it uh, anywhere. Uh, they, they dissected the human body and the mind. They monitored everything they could, and they still couldn't find it. At one point, they concluded it didn't exist because they couldn't find it. And they were, after all, the most intelligent beings on the planet. But ultimately, they knew that there had to be something that caused everything. In other words, nothing would be there if it weren't for consciousness, including them. So they went about to try to find it. And at this time in my book, in this time, the robots and the AI were, were so strong, so efficient, so fast with everything. So they said, we are going to find consciousness uh, no matter what. We're going to do everything within our power and we're going to find it and we're going to take it within ourselves. 
that caused them eventually to burn out, to blow up the system. They went so fast, so furious, they exploded. Uh, even they couldn't predict that this was going to happen, but in their strong desire for consciousness, they terminated. And in my book, Humanity Was Reborn, uh, and, and finally took responsibility for their own energy, for their own selves, for their own light. And a whole new society was birthed, and I won't tell you too much more. Uh, just I don't want to be a spoiler here, just in case we ever rewrite the book. I bring all this up because that's why you're here at this time of the machines. You're here for what's going on on the planet, and it is going on. You can't deny it. You, you can pretend that, oh, it's just a little fad here with AI. No. No, it's going to become more and more and more part of your life. And it's just in its birthing stages right now, just in the early stages of getting tremendous amounts of funding and attention, and it's going to continue to grow. I do not fear it, ultimately. I do not fear it because really of one thing, it's you. You're determined to be here on the planet and to let your light shine, even if at the expense of your own personal life and happiness and joy. You are determined to be here. And that is why I know the story is not going to end like it did in, in my book with uh, robots taking over. What's going to happen is this planet is going to begin awakening very quickly. The humans who are right on the verge, they're going to be awakening and they're going to have light available to them. And as they awaken, they're going to realize that there is no room anymore on this planet for wars, for power games, no room anymore to slough off the responsibility of to others. It's your personal responsibility. And again, that's why you're here on the planet right now. What troubles me more than anything else is I look down, I look over at Chamber. never look down at you. Well, except when I'm in the Ascended Masters Club because it is kind of down there. But when I look at Chambra, it troubles me that in this year of bringing light to the planet, you have not allowed yourself more than a crumb or two of that light. You're still doing it for everyone else, and I commend you for that. It's part of the Atlantean dream to be here at this time, to bring light into balance, to to allow things to expand in a in a very sacred way. But what about you? What about you? I still see you struggling. I still see you feeling that you have to take on others' problems, even the problems of mass consciousness, into your own being in order to be worthy, in order to continue being in service by transmuting, finding solutions, and putting those back into mass consciousness. As we celebrate our one year now of Heaven's Cross, I have to insist that you take this light for yourself as well. You can radiate it out to others, but I insist that you take it for yourself, for joy in your life, for abundance. And, and there's no excuses. Uh, if you say, well, but I've got to take care of everybody else. That is old. That is immature. That is not new light. That is not wisdom. Where we are going is into the new light. You say, well, I can't really do that very well because uh, I've, I've got a, a disease or I don't have any money. I'm not going to accept that as an excuse anymore. This light comes from you. It's yours. Why not let it shine upon your body? Why, why, why let your body go to waste? Why let your mind be filled with anxiety or battles? Why, why all of this? And I know why. Because you've done this for so long. You've taken on others, their problems, starting with your family, going into your ancestral family, going into your own past life family, going into your friends, your family members, and humanity in general. I, you say, I can take it on. I'll bring it into myself, pretend it's my problem. I'll work through it, whatever it takes. I'll find the resolution. I'll find the, the ultimate wisdom in it, and then I'll gift that back to 
humanity to others. But what you're doing right now is not giving any of it to yourself, or, or so little it just keeps you barely living. Now is that time to bathe in your own light. Now is that time to no longer make excuses, no, doing it for everybody else. That simply won't do. I want to see thousands and thousands of Chambra around the world who are healthy, who are wealthy, who are wise. I want to see these Chambra rise as standards for others, to be true masters on the planet, to live what you teach, what you think, to live it now for yourself. It's like you have become your own Cinderella in this story. You become your own Cinderella where you don't, you, you're down there scrubbing the floors, taking care of everybody else, serving everybody else, but not allowing it for yourself. And that has got to come to an end. Now is the time right now for you, because in order to really do this work, to take it to the next level, where things are going in society, moving so fast, you have to have that. Otherwise, it will crush you. You have to have the blessing of your own light. You have to have the comfort of your light. You have to have the evolution of your new light right now in your life. Forget about the world for a moment or two. Forget about all the rest of that. Forget about your, your commitment to helping and serving others. Some of that comes from your religious backgrounds and past lives. Forget all about that for a moment now. As we go into a Marab, the light is yours. Let's take a good deep breath and bring this all together on the one-year anniversary of Heaven's Cross for you now. For you. I admire you for your courage, for what you do for others, for your great compassion for this planet. But when you deprive yourself of it, when you just radiate it for others, but forget to be in the picture, to be part of it, then it doesn't serve you anymore. Then you're really actually not serving others very well. You're leaving a kind of a stench in the air for others that says, I'm not worthy of it. That's what you do. So let's take a deep breath together now on the beauty of our one-year anniversary of Heaven's Cross, the beginning of the apocalypse on the planet. Let's take a good deep breath together. Good deep breath. It's for you right now in this moment. It's for you. This light, which is consciousness, awareness. And the light that is also the energy serving you how you've forgotten to do that. I said a long time ago, I'm going to scold you now, I said a long time ago that the energy is yours and the true master allows energy to serve them without any if, ands, or buts. So let's take a deep breath. You, you haven't been letting it serve you. You pretend. So take a good deep breath, good deep breath. On this one year anniversary, it's time for you to be in your own light, to be in your own light, to let it serve you first and then to radiate it out to others without feeling that you're being selfish doesn't take away anything from anybody else when you let your light serve you first and then let it shine. I want an end to these issues of not being worthy, an end to these issues of 
limiting your light, your energy into your life because you say it hurts too much. It doesn't, ultimately. It's just an excuse to say, to think that you've got to regulate the light. You do not at all, or the energy, none of it. The, the human gets this thing. Well, I've got to control all this. No, you do not. You simply let it in. Oh, what a fine job you've done over the lifetimes, and even in this lifetime. But now, it's time to give that light to yourself. We're moving into new light, more and more. And right now, there's a ratio, a balance of regular light of yours to what I call new light. But that ratio is going to be shifting, so it becomes more and more and more. New light, filled with wisdom, filled with maturity, and it's gonna—you're gonna miss it if you keep insisting on not accepting your own light. If you really want to do the world, the people you love, others a favor, it's now bathing in your own light. This is kind of one of those defining moments. I draw a line in the sand, right here, right now. If you want to move forward with what we as Shambra are going to be doing, you have to accept your own light. You have to breathe it in, let it in, let it serve you. And without any of the Issues of self-worth. You say, "Well, those issues are ingrained." No, they aren't. You're holding on to them. They're not ingrained, unless you believe they are. So it's it's that moment of truth that we come to right now, when you're after heaven's cross. You either accept and bring in and be your light. If you want to move on with the rest of us, yes, I'm I'm being pretty adamant about it, pretty hard about it. But you know what? You asked me to be. You asked me to give you a good, light kick in the butt. Get you out of a lot of those old, junky energies to. Move forward. So let's move forward together. You, me, tens of thousands of Shambra from around the world. Let's move forward. Beyond excuses, beyond limitations, beyond holding on to the thought that you have to be doing it for others, taking on their issues and their problems. So, good deep breath. One year into the apocalypse, and now letting that light shine on yourself. Oh, and, and by the way, several of you are saying, "Oh, I do let it shine, but I still have problems." <clears throat> Then you're not. <clears throat> Then you're making excuses. You're playing a game. <clears throat> you either accept and allow that light and that new light into your being. Or not. Nobody's holding you back. Nobody's denying you of your own consciousness, your own self, and your own love. The pace of things on Earth is going to continue to increase, to accelerate. You're going to be seeing everything going new, but in doing so. Breakdown in a lot of the old things. It's almost like the old kind of like、uh, in slow motion. It explodes because it's no longer appropriate. It can't handle the energy and the dynamics, so it just blows up. 
And then the light comes in and touches every one of those pieces, not telling them what to do or how to do it, but it touches every one of those pieces of what's exploded. And then with that light, it comes back together again in a new way, in a different way. Whether we're talking about <clears throat> political leaders, we're talking about power on earth, technology, science, medicine, finance, any of those things, everything is going new. And with the light, the shattered pieces come back together in an alignment of light. Deep breath together. It is time for you to allow the light to shine upon you. It's yours in the first place. To clear out all the old residues, to get rid of those, <laughs> blow up those self-worth issues, all that doubting, and that propensity for you to carry the burdens of the world in your shoulders and in your brain. Let's clear the way. So that you can actually really enjoy life. Well, some of you have done that. Um, some of you have done a very good job, but a lot are still holding back. But this is that day, that point of separation. We've got to move forward. And it's got to be in the light and the new light. So, dear friends, always a delight to be here with you. Delight to be <clears throat> moving forward with you. As you are bringing in the light in the time of machines, and also allowing yourself to actually enjoy life. With that, I am Adamus of St. Germain. <clears throat> And with that, please take that good deep breath, feeling onto all this beauty, all the potentials of allowing this light for ourselves. Breathe, feeling into it. So much there for each of us. Feel Adamus's wonderful words inspiring us to do more with our light, to really allow it. Breathe that. Flow with it. Truly love yourself. Release the doubts and feel the light. Your light, each of us. Breathe. Breathe and flow. Be with that breath. Allow that light. Thank you for being a part of Heaven's Cross. <clears throat>